Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. <coughs> <coughs> I'm still fighting that thing that's trying to get on me because I've been running myself ragged with VBS this week. It's Friday. July the 26th. Our devotions are coming from the Bible Promise Book Devotional for Women. I'm feeling better, but there's still that little bit of a whatever it is. Um, we are in day five of week 30, and our focus for week 30 is generosity. Our devotion today is entitled, Don't Miss the Point. Our scripture comes from the chapter, our uh, book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38, one of my favorites, this is out of the King James Version, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So let's get into this. God has never been the originator of the get rich quick scheme. However, it could be inferred that this verse is suggesting that when you give $100 to God, then he is going to give you at least $100 in return. But read carefully. There's more. Whenever God provides a gift, it's always the gift you really need. When you give as an act of worship to God, he could return a gift of blessing, like encouragement from a friend, the help of a neighbor, or the restoration of a relationship. These items are only a few examples of the gifts God might give to those with a generous spirit. I can also add, you may have things that don't break down and need repair. You can go years and years and years beyond their use life, you know, appliances, cars, tires, you know. You might get extremely good gas mileage on that fuel tank. There's a whole variety of ways you're blessed with good health, ongoing good health. You know, there's so many different ways that God restore, re restores gifts to us, not just financially, although that happens too. Multiplying and having your food stretch more. You know what I'm saying? There's so many different ways to where you're not spending as much on groceries because you don't have to. You know, as he is promises to rebuke the devourer from us. <clears throat> and that's in Malachi 3, 10 and 11. Um, rebuking the devourer means he's he's stopping the one that will be eating up your money. OK, so what are the things that will take up your money? Unexpected expenses and. I mean, things happen. You're going to have to replace tires. You're going to have to, you know, things happen that can be costly. Having to replace a washer or a dryer in this day and age, you're looking at almost a thousand bucks. Okay. And when you have that thing last for a long time, now mind you, you need to be a good steward of that and not abuse it. Just like you need to be a good steward of your body and not abuse it. You see what I mean? We're doing our part. He's doing his part. And we're being generous and things are being heaped on us. You see what I'm saying? The blessings of God. There's there's all kinds of things. It's not <clears throat> God's going to do that no matter what. And there's no consequence for your actions if you are abusing your health by not eating right and not exercising and engaging in behaviors that also attack your health, like smoking and drinking and doing all the things that are bad for you. Okay. That's not what that means. All right. The measure you use might very well be the cheerful nature of your giving or the sense of obligation felt when you offer a gift. Money could be the least valuable gift God could offer back to you when he offers a gift of good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. When you give to get, you miss the point of generosity. And that's another one of those slot machine kind of giving. I'm going to give because God's going to just throw it back at me monetarily. You're giving with the wrong motive and you're, you'll are you not receive anything when you give with the wrong motive and you can't fool God. <clears throat> Other people might see your benevolent face, but, know, but not know that your heart 
is greedy or stingy, but God sees all that and he can't reward that. All right. It's ask the Lord to get your heart in the right place. Ask him to help you understand better the concept and to trust him with all that stuff. And, you know, this goes to show with whatever you use, it'll be measured back to you. If you are stingy, stinginess comes back. It's the, the uh, seed time harvest principle. And a lot of people like to call it karma, but whatever you sow, that you're going to reap. Okay. If you sow stingy things, you're going to reap stinginess. All right. If you, if you sow generosity, you're going to reap generosity. That's that's how it is. You just look at a farmer, ask a farmer when he's planting seed and sowing seed. Sometimes you see him just throwing, throwing handfuls of seed out into a field for, <clears throat> I'm not a farmer. My father was, but the concept was the more you, you throw out, the higher the yield, the less you throw out, the smaller the yield. <clears throat> the same is true for giving. I'm sorry, guys. I don't mean this. We have to understand, and it could be, you know, okay, I've got a little thing and the devil's trying to use it to disturb and distract you from hearing what's being said because he doesn't want any of us blessed. Okay. We have to have hearts that want to bless others. And that comes from submission to God. And what we have really isn't ours. It's God's to use, to be a blessing to other people, to express God's love and generosity to others. And God promises that when we have our heart in that place, the automatic for him is to restore and return to us a multitude of different ways, not just from money, but from blessing, just pouring out blessing. I've had times when I needed new clothing and I needed new clothes and we just did not have it in the budget. We had four kids. Obviously, they were going to get clothes and shoes before I did because they needed it for school and they were growing you know, so I would go years without having any new things. And I took care of my stuff. And I, you know, I always tried to make very good use of what I had, uh, launder it properly, iron it, wear it well, you know. I wasn't wearing anything with holes or stains or anything like that. But it had been a while since I had had a wardrobe refresh. And I was in one of those seasons. And I wanted to upgrade and add a few pieces to my professional wardrobe and my church wardrobe, and we just didn't have it. So that's when birthdays and Christmas really became important. In fact, those were usually the only times I ever got a new piece of anything because people say, what do you need? I need some clothes. They would get me a blouse or an outfit or something, which was always nice to get a new piece. And then suddenly somebody, I don't remember who, it could have been somebody at church or somebody at work, they were getting rid of a, a bunch of, it may have even been somebody that knew my sister who said, hey, I've got all this professional clothes, size, exactly my size, <clears throat> size extra large, who do you have any? Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, we're talking a giant, almost a lawn leaf kind of trash bag filled with suits and jackets and skirts and dresses. And I mean to tell you, I was outfitted for the next, I think I got five or six brand new outfits, a whole new professional wardrobe out of that. And I was so thrilled. Because a lot of it worked with the pieces I already had, which extended the wardrobe looks even more. It was so wonderful. But that was a blessing from the Lord. We couldn't afford it. And God brought me. And these things, some of them had tags on them still, so they had never been worn. And I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So that God blesses in different ways. We can't always think it's going to be one way. But no doubt, stinginess reaps stinginess. Generosity reaps generosity. So let's pray. God, we can honestly say that every single time we've given ourself or our money or time or talents to you, you have given even more in return. Help us to better understand this concept. If there's those listening are caught in a certain mind, mindset or they are struggling with understanding this, Father, open up their understanding and give them insight and give us hearts that are willingly generous, not for what you give in return, but for what we do in your name to bless others. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it in Jesus' name.
Amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back, check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It has been a minute since I did a Dollar Tree shop with me. Um, I haven't been able to do one this week because I've been so swamped with doing Vacation Bible School, but I know fall stuff is starting to come out, and even more back-to-school things are making their ways onto the shelves. So I will be doing one very very soon. So I hope you decide to come back and check it out. God bless you and bye until next time.